Hey guys, this video is going to be on connecting up the air hose to an air tool to then be able to do a tire rotation and then we'll follow it up with torquing the wheels. Uh, when you go to use the air hose, uh, it's normally going to be wound up on a reel like this and, and what you're going to start by doing is pulling the air hose down. Now when you pull the air hose down, you're going to pull out enough air hose so that it's laying flat on the floor all the way to the furthest point you need to work on. So we'll start by pulling out the air hose. And what you're going to notice is there's a set of teeth right here and there's a little latch right here, a little catch latch, and that's what locks it in place. So students often struggle trying to get this to lock. The secret is you need to stop with the teeth right by the latch. So the teeth are right in the middle of it. So I'm going to do this again. Click, click, let it go, and now it's going to lock in place. So you need to go slow with it if you constantly pull it back and forth. It's never going to lock in. So pull it out so you hear a click. Let it go slowly and now it locks in place. You're going to take out enough air hose so that you can go to the furthest point you need to work on and that the air hose lays across the floor. That way nobody trips on it. If the air hose is pulled like this, it's going to block people's way locking, walking through <coughs> and create a trip hazard. You're also going to get all the kinks out of it, all the twists, so that it lays flat on the floor. Uh, you should not have a bunch of twists and uh, things like that in it to where it might cause somebody to trip. The next part we're going to set up is our impact gun. The impact gun uh, uses the compressed air flows through the fitting right here, and then it flows into the gun and causes the end to spin. You're able to go forward and reverse with the impact gun. On this particular one, you move these pieces back and forth. You'll see an R right there, that's reverse. You'll see an F right here, that's forward. We're typically always going to be using these in the reverse setting first until we use a torque stick to put it back on, in which case we'll go forward. You can also change up the power or speed of the gun by turning the knob here. Uh, if you go to use the gun and it just makes a little like air blast sound, it typically means you need to dial up the power on the gun. So forward, reverse. There's some little numbers on this side, but the little line doesn't always correlate as nicely as we'd like it to. But five is going to be high powered, down here at zero is going to be really low powered. Some of the newer impact guns are a lot lighter, a lot quieter, um, and these use a push button style. That's going to be reverse that's going to be forwards. Reverse, forwards. You can also change the power of this impact gun by turning the knob here. That's going to be low powered. We go to the big red line, that's going to be high powered. These are really nice, they're really light, and they're much quieter. Now we're going to connect up our impact gun to the air hose. This often causes students a lot of difficulty. What you need to do is pull back on the collar and then connect the impact gun. I like to do this across the chest. I think it's a little bit easier to get some leverage. So pull back on the collar. While you're pushing, let go. Pull back on the collar, push, let go. And sometimes you have to gently slide the collar back a little bit. Some of these are a little sticky. Um, to disconnect it, pull it back, put it back on, pull back on the collar, and now it's connected. Gently pull on the impact gun, they should stay connected. When you pull the trigger, it's going to make noise, <coughs> kind of a fun noise. We need to set our impact gun for reverse, and now we need to find the correct size socket. Finding the correct size socket is probably the most critical part, because if the socket is too big, like this 22 millimeter is, you'll see it moves a lot. If I put this on the impact gun and use it, I'm going to break off all the corners on my lug nut and strip it out. Number one, that's a problem because you can't get the lug nut off. Number two, it's a problem because you've stripped it out and now you've got to find a way to get it off and replace it. So you're going to find the correct size socket that fits on there. And you'll notice this one doesn't fit all the way on kind of starts to, but it's a little too small. This is a 20 millimeter. 
That's not going to work. Now I go for a 21 millimeter. You'll notice that fits on. When I move it, it does have a little bit of play. That's the nature of impact sockets. They're a little sloppy, but it only twists just a little bit. You'll notice my fingers barely move. That's the sign of a good fit. If I go back to my 22, you'll notice how much louder it is, and you'll notice how much more it slips side to side. That's not a good fit. When in doubt, try going a size down. So this is a 22. If I'm not sure, go to a 21. The 21 fits on there. That means it's got to be better. So now the 21 fits. Um, if you were still in doubt, you could go down to a 20. I'm going to tell you there are almost no lug nuts that are 20, but 20 doesn't fit on there. That's not right, so it's got to be my 21. Um, as we get ready to use our impact guns here, I want to take a moment to talk about sockets. Now, sockets come in, uh, in two flavors, if you will. We've got the shiny chrome ones, and we've got the matte black finish ones that don't have the shininess to them. And there's a reason for that. The reason is <clears throat> these are a much harder metal. You'll see the walls are a lot thinner. Um, these are a very strong material. They're kind of like a china plate. Uh, if you drop a china plate, these can actually crack. The metal is so hard. That's really good for um, preventing things from stripping out, getting a good tight fit over a fastener. The problem is if we were to put this on our impact gun, uh, the impacting mechanism is so strong it could actually crack the socket. That's where impact sockets come in. Um, these sockets have a different type of metal allergy to them and it's actually a little softer. It's more like plastic. Uh, it's got a little bit of give to it. You'll also notice the wall is thicker and this is made to handle the hammering mechanism inside the impact gun. So anytime we're going to use the impact gun, we always use the black sockets that are rated for impact. There are some out there that are black that are not rated for impact, but in my shop, um, if it's a black socket, um, it is rated for impact, uh, just as a general rule. Now, what can happen is if the chrome socket is subject to too much stress, it can actually crack. And I don't know if you can see that real well right there, but that is a crack that has gone through the socket. Typically, they crack at the points right there, just kind of the thinnest area, the weakest area. But just too much force, and the metal will crack, the chrome will flake off. And the problem is, as that spins, that chrome is like a razor blade, it will slice your skin up. So do not use these on an impact gun. Not good. Don't do it. Um, always go for the plain finish matte black socket without any paint on it. All right, that is your rundown on sockets for an impact gun. Now we're ready to connect up the sockets to the impact gun. You're going to take the impact gun, there's a square in the socket, connect it up. You never, ever, 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 ever want to pull the trigger while the socket's on here. It'll spin. It'll fly off, it'll hit you, it'll hit a car, it'll hit something. You don't want to do that. It's very, very dangerous. If you want to hear the sound of the impact gun, <laughs> it's a cool sound, take the socket off. If the socket's off, I'm not going to yell at you. If the socket's on, I'm going to send you to the timeout corner. Don't do that. People get hurt with that. When you go to take off the lug nut, you're going to loosely put your hand around the socket just to guide it so that once the lug nut comes off, it doesn't get squirrely on you and get unsteady. So I'm going to line up the socket perfectly. It's all the way against the rim. I'm going to loosely put my hand around it and then pull the trigger. The lug nut comes off. And now what I'm going to do is put this in a safe spot up here on the lift arm. That way, when I go to put this back together, it's all within reach. If you set it on the grounds, it's going to end up in the drain and then it gets lost. I'm going to go to my next one. Next one. And my final one. When I take off my final one, I like that to be at the top. That way the tire doesn't tend to fall off as easy. Um, let's start with that. And now you'll see the, the lug nut's still on there. I can give it the final twist by hands. And now my wheel's ready to come off. 
you're going to set your impact gun on the floor or on a tool chest. Never set it on the lift arm or it's going to fall off and land on your toes or somebody else's. I also don't mind if you take it by the air hose and set it down on the ground so that you can go back to the tire. Um, it is okay. Some teachers might not like you setting it on the ground. I don't mind. I'd rather the impact gun be on the ground, better yet on a tool chest, than on a lift arm where it's going to fall and hurt somebody's toes. Tires, some of them are fairly light, some of them are fairly heavy. Uh, your bigger trucks and SUVs, uh, I would recommend two people, one person take each side of the tire. Uh, this is a Nissan Altima, it's a fairly light tire, so we're going to pick it up and then take it down. Once you take the tire off the car, you're always going to set it on the floor underneath the car. Uh, this way people aren't tripping over it. Uh, you are never going to set it up against the lift arm. That's a no-no. If you set it by the lift arm or on the lift post and somebody lowers the car down, uh, it'll squeeze the tire and it'll take off flying across the shop. So it always goes flat on the floor underneath the car where it's out of the way.